We gonna be here all day. We gonna be here all day, baby. I like this kind of party. Welcome back to the way back. I'm Ryan Sickler over here. RyanSickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all social media. Very excited to have on the way back in the seat today, ladies and gentlemen, the machine. Burt Kreischer is here. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. You will find tobacco in your life again. Listen to where we're going today. Trigger warning. If you're trying to quit smoking, dipping, chewing, pouches, whatever you got, it don't listen somewhere. to this. Don't listen to this. So you said Tom got you addicted. Is Tom that got right? me back addicted. Back to, addicted yeah. to it. But when did you first start? I'll tell you, and then you t- you go first, and I'll. Freshman you. year, freshman year. Russell Matthews, me, Alan Rieger, Blake Casper, Cayman Lazara. I think maybe Jay Langford. We were walking in South Tampa in one of the most beautiful neighborhoods you could ever walk in. I miss South Tampa. If I if if I could, I'd live there. And Russell Matthews pulled out a can of Hawkins. And he said, do you want to take a dip? And I said, no, I don't want to throw up. And he goes, no, 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 this isn't bad. You should try it. And I felt, I felt my first chest hair come out. I put in a dip of Hawken and we walked and it kicked in and we talked and we walked to the golf course and we took it out and I was hooked. I was hooked and I was, it was the first the, you know, Pinocchio had the donkey boys. That was my first walk into the donkey boys. I tried a cigarette after that. Fucking loved cigarettes. I wasn't even doing it right. They taught me how to inhale. Loved a cigarette. Had you had a drink before that? No. You did tobacco before anything. That was your tobacco first before substance. Anything, yeah. yeah first too. substance. And then, and then I would get cigarettes and we would walk around our neighborhood and fucking smoke cigarettes and fucking, it was so fun. The smell of a cigarette when a, the first draw of a cigarette Dude, is so still, sexy. Still, the first strike when that tobacco when the before it's smoked and everything's coming out of it, that first light of a cigarette smells so fucking smells good. So fun. my dad Taste. gave me dip. I'm telling you, in <laughs> elementary school, bro. I'm telling you, my father gave us the friend here. He he went hard on it too. I saw him one day just out there popping, and he didn't do it a lot. He just had a... <laughs> He's like, Ryan, I'm not going to live forever. We need to get you into he, everything he, real he quick. Did, he didn't even live long. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know this right now, but I only got 12 years left. So let's get... Let's get we, it's going to be a little, a little bit of a quick course. <laughs> Crash course. Let me see your dick. Pull it out. All right. <laughs> so... He gives me Hawken, gives us Hawken and teaches us, you know, put a little in your lip or whatever. Right. Cause he would hunt back in the day and stuff. Yeah. We were never into hunting. Once we found sports, he was like done. I think he just went hunting with his buddies to just to do something. You yeah. know what I mean? Once we were in sports, he was like, I don't give a fuck about hunting, but put it in. <clears throat> and I'm like, shit's kind of, I got a buzz. I really got like, it's, a cool, it's high, a cool buzz, you know, it's a cool buzz. And then I start getting into it, but I'm talking, this this is just a few months of this. And then next thing I know, I'm putting a skull bandit. All right. So now I got a hawking in my lip and I got a bandit in the side. Okay. I'm in elementary school. Okay. I'm in like fourth or fifth grade. (laughs) The most Baltimore thing in the fucking world. (laughs) And then I swallow it. Oh, and I get, shout out to Ty Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when Ty Rodriguez followed it. I get it. so fucking sick, dude. So sick. And I'm like, dad, I'm throwing up. And he is laughing so hard. I'm like, why would you give this to a kid? And he's like, that's why. That's why. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. From yeah. now on. And Kirsten said it earlier. When you pop that winter green to this day, you see how you are. I'm the opposite. Oh, I am buddy. nauseous as fuck when I smell that. And I've watched my friends swig accidentally off their Snapple bottle of spit and shit, you know, like, ah. But I, he, my dad told me, he said he watched his uncle. And this was back, because I remember when you could walk into, like, little convenience store. We had Little George's and all these little stores. And you could get Beech Nut, like real tobacco, oh, Red Man. So Beech Yeah, that nut, old school Beech Nut right beach there. Beech Nut was the shit. But my dad said he watched his uncle have a fall asleep in a recliner, and then he just heard and he swallowed it and he said he just shit and puked and he's like that's that's, so i never saw my dad do it again after that either i was like what the fuck's that all about so let's i'm gonna i'm gonna i want to there they are there they are there's that bandit i'm gonna paint 
five, maybe five pictures of my memories of tobacco. And these are beautiful. Is that one with Russell Matthews with Hawk, with Hawkins? And then I was a casual user. I, I would if the guys were doing it. And cigarettes in the back of Trey Arnold's car, driving around freshman, sophomore year, smoking a cigarette in the back of that car. Anyone want a cigarette? Yeah, fuck yeah. And you smoke a cigarette. And to be in a car with a bunch of bros driving around, talking shit, smoking cigarettes was fucking beautiful. Then uh, at Alan Rieger's beach house, uh, Scott O'Brien got me to try Copenhagen. Mm-hmm. And the next one. and I was like, I was like, I was like, okay, it was the snuff, snuff. It was, yeah, it was not pouches. Little. It was snuff, and you check the date on it. It was like all the fun shit. Yeah, hey, what's the date is. on your Copenhagen? And they tell you and be like, oh, it's gonna be dry. Uh, and then you started getting into it. And then we go to baseball, and Coach Kent w- let us dip while we played. Mm-hmm. While we not during the games, but like he was our coach for our Legion ball. And he'd, he'd have a can and he'd be like, boys. And we had teachers at school, shout out to coach Sayo, who would be like, you got a can on you? And you'd be like, yeah. And he'd take a dip out of your can. He'd take some yeah, of your Take a dip out of your can. <laughs> but oh, yeah. Shit. And, and then, and then, oh fuck, man, I missed that. I, the smell of that. So I will buy cans of, I will never dip again, but I will buy cans of Copenhagen and cans of Skull Mint. So we then go to college and Copenhagen's around. There's two types of dudes. There's dudes who dip Skull and dudes who dip Copenhagen. And my guys were the guys, the people I hung out with, Skull Mint. And motherfucker, I started dipping Skull Mint. And then Skull came out with flavors. In my probably first junior year or third sophomore year, it came out, they came out with flavors. Cherry. Oh, and all, I remember that summer when they came out with flavors, trying them all. I fucking <laughs> did, lo- I loved them. I loved them. See, I never got into this because oh, of that. Oh, and 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 cigarettes and skull. There was no better feeling than going into my fraternity house, and for and everyone's in the lounge, and we're all talking shit, busting balls. The funniest dudes I've ever known in my life were in that fraternity house. I remember Jason Filomino. Shout out to Jason Filomino. He was jacked as fuck. Everyone was sitting there, and he's like, and so and someone goes. Jason, how come your arms aren't as big as your, or your your legs aren't as big as your arms? And he goes, yeah, I don't know. And Damian Burdick goes, well, you should start sticking the needle in your ass. And, <laughs> and, and everyone's like, yo, I need a dip right now. That energy of like, we're going to light up Jason Filomino. <laughs> I remember Eddie Fernandez, Eddie Fernandez put his dog down, right? He had to hold on. He put his dog. This is the fucking hardest I've ever laughed. Eddie, Eddie Fernandez put his dog down and he was in chapter and we're like, where's Chewy? And he goes, Chewy was a house dog. And <laughs> this is a different time, okay? They were, it was a black, it was a, it was a black lab rescue. It was not a good looking dog. And it was, and it had ticks and it was weird. And the, the dudes, no one knew who did it, but someone would take the chalk from the pool table, the white chalk, and put a line down Chewy's back so he looked like a skunk. <laughs> And Eddie would get so fucking pissed. So one day, Eddie puts Chewy down. He goes, comes into the chapter. It's fucking 180 dudes, right? 180 dudes. And Eddie comes into the chapter and someone goes, where's Chewy? And he goes, well, I put her down. I put her down because the way you guys treated Chewy, you didn't deserve that. Chewy was a great fucking dog. And we're all like, fuck. And Jason Filomino was Eddie's roommate. <laughs> he goes, Eddie, I... I got to tell you, man, I was responsible for the skunk line a lot of times. Like, we just thought it was funny. And, you know, if you, for any reason, if I had anything to do with the reason you put Chewy down, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And the room lit up Chewy for an hour. They're like, that dog sucks so bad. He's spitting. A week later, (laughs) Chewy shows the fuck back up. This motherfucker never dog he never killed his fucking dog and then chewy showed up and chewy was like guys but because we had trashed chewy so hard we ended up loving chewy because chewy was like chewy was one of us now yeah, yeah. And, but i remember that as soon as they came, everyone was like i need a dip i need a dip right now and then and then and then this is about tobacco this is about tobacco so then i oh, i go to europe 
I smoke so much in Europe that I, I end up not enjoying it anymore. And I go home, I say, I'm done all tobacco. I'm done uh, tobacco, all of it. And then I go to one softball, intramural softball game, and I put a dip in. And immediately, I was, I've never felt addiction that way. I went in, and I felt it kick in. And I was like, God damn it, I'm fucking back. I'm back on dip. I can't fucking believe it. I moved to New York, and I can't find dip. And I don't want to smoke. So I quit. I quit altogether. The second I moved to New York, I never did it again. And I move out to LA. And my dad sends me some cigars. And I had, I had had cigars before, but it, I saw it to be this highfalutin thing that I didn't want to be a part of. I opened the French doors. I lived in Cecil B. DeMille's old house. I opened the French doors overlooking Hollywood and Highland. And I had a cigar by myself in the house. In, smoking inside, a cigar inside is so much sexier than outside in my opinion and i had a cigar and the nicotine from the cigar kicked in and i felt a little bit and i enjoyed a cigar and from that moment to this day i have enjoyed cigars effortlessly i love them so much because it allows me i think it brings my blood pressure down i've really started smoking cigars now cut to i'm not drinking i'm in la I drive to the Rite Aid on the corner of Fairfax and Sunset. And I just started, I just met right next Leanne. to the griddle, bro. Yeah, right next to the griddle. And I said, and I was like, ah, I said, you know what? I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind some Red Man. I hadn't had Red Man in a while. And, and I was you like, you actually would chew back in the day too? Oh, oh yeah. Well, so I never did that. We did all of it. In you all of high put school, a pout up. put a, a big chaw in. You would. Yeah. And, and, and I did you I, ever do the plug? Remember the one that had the yeah, plug? Yeah, of course, of, of course. <laughs> I to bring up tobacco with the plug. That that a plug of tobacco. I is never, so fucking I sexy. never got into that. I would see it all the time, and I'd see dudes do it. I'm like, you're a different type of dude. You're using Bro. a plug plug and they had red man totems yes, you cut it off right yeah. there see that oh it's so sexy it just fall apart in your mouth you had to you'd have to work it you'd get mm -hmm. it in your cheek and you have to work it see, i never it did up. you did and that then it one? would find its you integrity it would find its bit. integrity in your fucking mouth levi garrett's really great good but uh, red man totems were awesome they were this long and it was a stick a plug stick that's it that's the one i'm thinking yeah of, the red totems. man totems yeah. <laughs> and, and so i'm in new york i'm in la i haven't fucked with tobacco and probably in probably seven years, six years, and I put in a chew, and immediately I'm back. Immediately, I'm going. I'm not going to dip. I don't want to dip, but I'm going to start chewing. And Leanne's dad has chewed almost twice a day his entire fucking life. I meet Leanne. And what's and he doing? Red Chaw? man. Red man. Yeah. Red golden blend. Golden blend. Fuck, it's good. There it fucking is right red there. man. Golden red blend man, is so fucking blend. good. And I was working. I was working with Jay Moore at the time. Jay used to dip. I didn't want to dip because I knew. I thought dip was the next level. I've always held dip at this, like, I'm really respectful of not dipping because I know that once I dip, I'm gone forever. And so I, I start chewing Red Man Golden Blend. And Leanne's dad, uh, when, when she, when we went home for the first time, she, she was like, I'm really embarrassed. I, I, I'm not sure how you're going to fit in with my family. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, you know, we don't have money. And I was like, I'm, I'm fine. She goes, no, no, I mean, like, we're, you know, we're very modest. And I was like, oh, that's fine. She's like, we're going to stay with my dad. And I was like, cool. She goes, well, my dad lives in a convenience store. And I was like, what? She was like, he owns a convenience store. He lives in the back. So we're going to be living in a convenience store for like a week. And part of me is like, okay. Like, I, I didn't know how I was going to, you know, fit in. First of all, the convenience store was attached to the freezer. So it was ice fucking cold. <laughs> There were zero windows, and he had the best fucking couch in the world. Second I got in there the first night, I was like, I could live in a convenience store for the rest of my life. Then I wake up, and everything in a convenience store, you can just eat. You can just eat anything. There's beer for there. miles. Yeah. I'm just sitting and drinking and eating in a convenience store all fucking day, and her dad gets the hookup on Golden Blend. So her dad starts hooking me up with Golden Blend, and I am fucking in it. I am chewing to the point we were, I worked with Jay Moore. What are you spitting in? Chocolate cup, nuts yeah, can? You ever would, have the chocolate nuts? I was, the whole, the, all the guys would have a chocolate nuts no, can. Whatever like cup, old coffee can. Put a, put a piece of paper in it, and then whatever cup I had was my spit cup. And I remember at my lowest of tobacco, 
I was working with Jay Moore. We were in Brea, and I walked from the Brea Improv to the grocery store behind the strip mall. But I walked all the way trying to get chew because I needed chew. I was addicted. I was really fucking addicted. And I went everywhere to get chew, and I couldn't find it. And I was like, oh, fuck, I have a problem. Leanne gets pregnant. We go to our wedding, fucking chew like crazy because we're in the South. We're driving in a car to go to our honeymoon. We went down to a place called Little Palm Island. Could not afford it. Still probably can't afford it. It's so fucking expensive. We didn't know how much it cost. It, we blew so much fucking money there. In the car, I put in a chew. Leanne's pregnant at the time, secret time. Uh, and I realize this is not going to end well. I'm like, I'm going to get mouth cancer. I, just, I have a baby girl on the way. I am not. I'm done. And I quit chewing tobacco that week. I never chewed again. I never chewed ever again. I started smoking cigars every now and then. I'd have no cigars. Dipping, no no dip, no chew, no nothing. And then this soon to be fat fuck again, <laughs> Tom Segura, <laughs> says to me, Have you had uh, rogues? I go, What the fuck's rogue? And he goes, Dude, they're awesome. <laughs> and I'd seen like all the Bustin' with the Boys guys did it, all the fucking. All the barstool guys all put zins in their mouth. Shane Gillis eats them like Tic Tacs. And I'm like, fuck, man. I've, I've, I've wanted to flirt with them. So for so long, I've been, I've been flirting with zins. I'd buy zins. I'd buy cans and smell it. It would remind me of my pledge ship, of being a pledge. And I, rem I I'd buy a can of Copenhagen and I'd put my tongue and I'd put my tongue in it and taste it. Uh -huh. And then I'd spit it out. Dude. You'd buy a whole can just to lick it a little bit and then throw it if out. <laughs> We drove Georgia to college, and I bought cans of Copenhagen and Just licked them lick and licked them, licked them, licked them, smelled them, <laughs> smelled them, and it would bring me back to being. It would bring me back to. Isn't uh, it crazy nostalgia the way smell just ties to memories like that? It's, it's insane. Music too. David Allen Co. with a can of Copenhagen, yeah. and I learned how to drink over the Copenhagen, so I could drink and chew and swallow it and, and shit. I, oh, oh, Coach Kent said. You know, real men swallow it. Real men don't spit. And I was like, okay. So I started doing that. That's not good for you. Dude, I remember. So the older times, right? Like, yeah. tell me if you had any of this. Our Little League baseball coach smoked. Oh, Right in our face. Yeah. Like, I talk about it. He would lean over you and show you how to bunt with a cigarette. And, and your your eyes are burning. And he's like, why aren't you getting down? I'm like, because your fucking cigarette's burning the shit out of my eye. Alan Rieger's coach mom. Coach Al would Alan smoke Rieger's, right in our face. Alan Rieger's mom would drive us to the beach and smoke with the windows up. Yeah. And we're yeah. Like, Dude, I flew to On Europe. I flew to Europe with my buddy Weicho. And... <laughs> And we picked smoking section on the plane. They had a smoking section. You have never realized how little you smoke until you sit around smokers on a fucking plane. Both of us are throwing up like, this is disgusting. The whole plane is a smoking the, section dude, when someone's smoking on it. It was, I have not uh, smoked a cigarette in, so I was 20, probably two when I went to Europe. So in roughly 30 years, I've not smoked a cigarette. I didn't, I haven't taken a dip in 30 years. 30 years. I have smoked cigars. I enjoy, I love cigars. I love cigars. I love everything about cigars. I love the history of the cigars. I love everything about cigars. And when I quit drinking for this big chunk, cigars were my go-to. A joint and a cigar. A joint and a cigar. And, and I mean, a, a, a fucking tatuaje cigar a nice big bold cigar joint and then a cigar on the back porch was my every night and I said I got to stop on these cigars the day we went to my cruise we were in Miami and Ryan the same little addiction thing came out and I was like we got there we landed and off the plane I didn't drink on the plane and I was like I was like I need to I want to hit a vape pen and I want to have a cigar let's go to a cigar lounge and we went to a cigar lounge and sat with these men that all sit and smoke cigars Leanne came Leanne was like oh had the best fucking conversation, best fucking conversation, and had a cigar, and I felt the kick of the the nicotine when you get towards like halfway through, you feel it almost, and I was like, God damn it, I fucking love cigars, but he's like, I gotta quit smoking cigars, because I'm smoking them every fucking day. I'm smoking sometimes two a day. I get, I have one in the- Full cigar? Full fucking cigar. I, when I saw yeah, you- Yeah, that's a fat one out there he had. And I said, I gotta, I gotta quit the cigars, because I would be like, 
I would. We'd go to Austin. How long does it take you to smoke a full cigar like that? Like forty-five minutes. Are you doing it in one session, or you? Put, oh yeah. You cut it and no, come no, back no, 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 no. By the way, shout out to Ron Bennington. I remember one time talking to him about cigars, and he said, "I have more cigars than I'll ever fucking smoke. Uh, I'll never get through all the cigars that I have." And he goes, "And if I don't like it, I'll just, I'll just fucking have a new one." And so I started going like, "I have so many fucking cigars." Because people send me scars, scar manufacturers reach out to me, like Tatuaje. Uh, 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 I, I'm, I can name them all right now, but they will send me boxes. So I have boxes and boxes of cigars. So if I didn't like a cigar, I'd start it. Maybe I'd have a cup of coffee, a few, smoke a little bit of the cigar, put the cigar on, be like, fuck, I'm done with it. But I said to myself, I got to quit cigars because I'm smoking too many of them. And then that soon to be fat fuck. <laughs> introduced me to zins and i will tell you i will tell you the second so we did rogues i didn't really the rogues didn't kick as much they were fine they were fine we were dabbling in rogues and then we got a can of zins i had gotten high after a show i'm not really drinking much after my shows these days at all really and i got high and i put a zin in <laughs> And my fingers started tingling. All of it came back. All of it Does came it back. Does it taste like the old no, dip? No, it doesn't. It's just, it just tastes a little wintergreen. It's just the nicotine. It is so beautiful. Kirsten, bring up um, Hawkins. That's, yeah. Hawkins, the gateway drug. It's the finger in the no pussy. Doubt. <laughs> if you're looking to fuck, Hawkins, the finger in the pussy. Skull Mint is neck kissing. But fucking Copenhagen is anal sex. It is so good. <laughs> Copenhagen it is, so is anal good. sex. Cigar is yeah. more like just like flirting and texting, in my opinion. And I'll tell you right now, these Zins, there's maybe, and, and Peter's as addicted as I am because I got him addicted because I got addicted. I was like, I'm not going into this alone. I said, I said, listen, it's not bad for us if we just do it for a short period. So we're quitting January 1st. We're quitting. Okay. But we we've I've, i put it online i was like how many zins are too many zins because <laughs> we're six milligrams is the ones we're doing and i've a cup of coffee and a zin and you are so fucking creative you are so dialed in you are so it's a buzz it's and i gotta be honest with you i think sometimes i don't drink because i want to have a zin i had a buddy one time he uh his brother had sent them some cubans from florida and um, also some rum, but the rum broke in the package and soaked the cigars. So he let them dry, sun dry. He was like, let's just try them. Let me tell you something, Burke Reicher. I got so fucked up smoking a rum soaked cigar. I got fucked. I had to put it out. I was I, like, I've, I've gotten, I'm fucked up. I, they, uh, brothers. Happy accident. Black dudes love my dad. There's a, they love like how you brothers, black dudes, <laughs> black men. Black men love a little bit of cognac in their in their humidor and to let it seep into the cigars. And, oh, is and that right? I, that's so and it's that's a thing. Brand new stereotype. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I've only known two black guys to do it. But I've never known anyone else to do it other than these black dudes. And so and and those cigars fucking kick. I'll They're bet. fucking yeah. awesome, dude. I, I I mean I get nostalgic. I just did a show in Winston Salem and I was like. Oh, big tobacco, baby. Let's go look at their houses. Like, I want to fucking... Well, remember NASCAR used to have Skull Bandits oh. and Winston. It was the Winston Cup. for it. They got rid of tobacco out of the whole thing. Yeah. I'm used gonna... to be a Skull guy riding around out there and shit. It's the coolest conversations. I remember Bill Burr would call me up and be like, yo, you want to have a cigar? And just come over and have a cigar and just chop it up. No booze, just smoking cigars. It's the coolest fucking thing you can do as a man is have a cigar with another man. I've done it with Tommy so many times. Like... His neighbor's a big cigar guy. And so I remember one of the first times I was in Austin, we went up to his house, went up to his porch and had cigars just talking shit. And I fucking love it. I love that Rogan smokes cigars now because it's so, it's so not, I mean, I, I, I just say this, but it's so something I never thought Joe would do. I never thought he was just not a cigar guy. And I remember the first time I went in, Joe's like, you want a cigar? And I was like, fucking thank you, Lord. If this dude could not get cooler, this guy is the epitome of like for us. He's the man. Yes. He's the fucking bro. He is. He is the most loving, sensitive, coolest, thoughtful dude in the world. But when he started smoking cigars, I was like, "Fuck yeah! This is what I've wanted: is to fucking have a cigar with Joe." And every time he do his podcast, cigar, whiskey, fuck yeah. Oh, I love it. I love. I love everything tobacco's given me, and I understand. 
that I can't do it all the time. I understand there's a, a finite time limit. I will quit Zins January 1st, <laughs> but I'll start up again one time because I, I might, I, who knows? Well, this I, is going to air after January 1st, so let's see if it, when this drops, if you're still good. You got to get out of here, brother. Thank you. Buddy, Thank you for I, I taking a trip I, down I memory lane. Flowers. Everything you do is so thoughtful in our business, and I'll speak for myself. Sometimes when you, you do stuff with each other, there are things on a calendar and you go in and you go, I'm going to, I'm, I can say someone I love, but I'm going to do Whitney's podcast and you go, okay, I'm, Whitney's is a little different because it's, it, she puts as much thought as you do. But sometimes you go do podcasts and you, it's just a thing in the calendar, you know, you got to do and you're like, well, I got to fucking think of a cool story. I don't have to think of anything. When I work with you, you put th so much thought into the products you make these podcasts that they are a true joy. And I end up finding myself coming out fulfilled like feeling richer for the experience and i have to say this and if please clip this out if you're not listening to ryan behind a mic talking to anybody you're missing the joy of podcasting you have done this better than all of us and you do it at such a fucking high level your interviews with people i i see things of guys i've known forever felipe i know felipe very well but when he i hear you talk to him I learned so much more about our friends that I just don't, I, I d d don't know and don't, and, I, and I'm telling you, I would do this with you every single day. If Tom dies, I, <laughs> I would love for me and you to just take over two bears. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for real. You don't understand how much that means to me coming from guys like you and Tom and you've helped so much. Oh. You've inspired this. I mean, this is my little mini version of what you got going on. Thank you, dude. Thank I you for you. I'm so glad you're healthy. Flowers. I'm so Thank glad. You. I love I, you, dude. I love I love having friends like you. I have, I'm a richer man because of that. Same. Thank you, brother. I love, I love you, you Burke I love you more. Uh, as always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We will talk to you all next week. Mm -hmm.